Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited and welcome back to our 5.9 Cummins engine rebuild series. Now in the last video, you saw us pull the cab on the truck. We got the engine mostly disassembled. We got the cylinder head taken off. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll go ahead and link to it right here. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to finish with removing the engine from the vehicle. We're gonna put it on the bench. We're gonna disassemble it, find out exactly what it is that went wrong and find out just how much it's going to cost to fix everything. Stay with me. You know, there's a reason these engines can take so much power because they are just an absolute tank of an engine. I think this thing is quite a bit heavier than the 6.7 Ford I just did recently. So whew, we're gonna be careful pulling this one over to the bench. You guys know how much I love it when I dump coolant all over my floor. Yes. Keep doing that. That's what I need. Let's do that. Let's do exactly that, you little. <laughs> ah. So irritating. Well, that was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> this engine is gigantic. Wow, what a beast. But I have to say, oh my gosh, my bench is standing up to it. Now I shouldn't say anything now because this thing's probably going to collapse with the engine on it and then I'm gonna look like a big idiot. But man, I'm really impressed with this little table I got. I think it's called like a, a mighty giant or a little giant table. Um, I just picked it up used from uh, an auction place and I'm really, really impressed with it. So, hey, if you find a, a little giant, mighty giant, I'll, I think I'll put what it actually is down below. But anyway, if you find one of these tables, go ahead and pick it up. This thing will stand up to a 5.9 Cummins block sitting on it. So now's the time. Now is when we're going to start pulling off the engine oil pan, we're gonna pull the uh, pickup tube off of there and we're gonna to try to find out what exact bearing issue we've got. Huh. All right, so I'm definitely seeing some Bearing material in the bottom of the pan. I also see this plastic here. I don't know what this is. Hmm. But it's not nearly as chunky as it was with the 6.7. Hmm. I don't know what this is either. Like a plastic clip of some kind. All right, so I think we found our primary culprit here. We're looking at cylinder number two. The connecting rod bearings are pretty much munched on this thing. I'm gonna take a look at the crank, but more than likely it's gonna need to be replaced as well. There you go. You can see it ate right through the, the coating and down through below. So these bearings are definitely destroyed. That's cylinder number two. I'm gonna continue with my disassembly, see if I find anything else that's really shocking. Oh, yep, another winner. Cylinder six, not looking good. Yeah, connecting rods jack too. I don't know why I'm so upset. I go into this expecting to find catastrophic failure. And then when I find catastrophic failure, I'm like, oh man, that's terrible. <laughs> what did I think was gonna happen? Okay, so we've got all the connecting rods pulled off. We know that cylinder six is our major culprit here. This bearing is actually welded to 
the crank currently. So yes, that will indeed cause a problem. So the crankshaft needs to be replaced. That connecting rod assembly needs to be replaced because it got tore up a little bit too much. Now I need to start pulling the main caps and see if any of those got too scarred up. Really, like I've mentioned, the big hope here is that I can just replace the main bearings with new bearings and I don't have to replace the block. So this is going to be the one that really tells us how much money we're gonna have to spend on this project. Whew, smell of burned oil, delicious. So the nice thing about these main caps is they are all stamped as far as what number they are. So you can't mix them up and the direction. Um, so very easy to put these back together. You can just pop them out with no problem. Let's get to it. All right, well, the good news is that on cylinder number six, which are, was our worst cylinder for our connecting rod, the main bearing actually doesn't look that bad at all. It definitely was punished just slightly, but it's, no, it's nowhere near the actual castings for the main bearing. So I think we're looking good for our block here. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the rest of these off and see where we stand. Let me tell you guys, working with one of these things and taking it down to the bare block it really, really gives me respect for those guys who are having to upgrade to a billet block to hold all the power because this thing is such a amazing beast in stock form that I cannot imagine making so much power that this would not cut it. So if you're one of those guys, kudos to you. That's really impressive. Definitely seeing a fair bit of scarring in these main bearings because of the metal that went through them but none of them is getting anywhere close to actually going through the bearing surface. So really, really happy about that. I have not yet removed the crankshaft, but I'm feeling very, very positive right now that the block is okay and that we are strictly dealing with a bearing issue. Okay guys, I'm going to continue in my process to remove this timing plate cover so that we can get the crankshaft out. That way I can really inspect the crankshaft main bearing journals on the block side and make sure that for sure our block is in good shape before we go ordering parts. Now I thought this was a good opportunity to show you guys something. On the newer trucks, call it 14 and up, it is somewhat common or even fairly common for these to leak oil behind the timing cover plate. Now if it's just the cover on the front here with the front crank seal, not too big of a deal. You can handle that in an afternoon. It's not very much fun, but it's also not that big of a deal either. However, if it is leaking at the gasket behind this plate, which again is pretty common on 14 and up, that's an issue because you're going to have to remove the camshaft in order to replace that gasket. That's the only way this timing cover comes off is if you remove the camshaft, which in the case of the newer trucks means pulling the cab because that's the only way you're going to get enough room to pull this out. You can pull the front end apart, but it's a ton more work. It takes forever. You gotta literally take the entire front end of the truck off in order to get to this point. And even then, you're going to run into some of the frames, so you're gonna have to jack the engine up just a little bit so you can clearance enough to get the camshaft out of there. So if this gasket back here is leaking and your truck is under warranty, go get it fixed right now, because it is a major job. All right, I'm gonna get this camshaft pulled out of there. We'll pull the cover plate off and continue from there. So this gasket here is the one that leaks all the time. On the newer ones, it seems to leak from uh, this area kind of down in here. Some of the older ones, it leaks right here. And it'll actually push the gasket out due to crankcase pressure. This one is old enough where it probably wasn't affected by that, but looks to be in good shape. Overall, block still looks good. Let's pull this crank out and see what we got. Ay, 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 ay. That wasn't too bad. Okay, we are verified the block is okay. So really good news. I'm um, just double checking all of the camshaft boards. All right, so final verdict here. As you can see, cylinder number six, 
bearing has spun on the connecting rod. So it's basically, I mean, it's kind of welded to the crankshaft there, but basically crankshaft is done, rod bearings are done. However, the block is okay. All the main bearings look pretty decent, so we should be able to salvage this block. So now I just need to order a new crankshaft, new bearings, new gaskets and seals, and we'll put this thing all together again. All right, you guys, there it is. We have found exactly what the problem is. Now, what caused the bearing to spin is kind of unknown at this point. I looked at the oil pump and it actually looks in fantastic shape. I don't see any scoring at all. So I'm not sure if they just ran it low on oil or if they just did not do proper oil changes. Those things, of course, can contribute to something like this. But in any case, bearing spun. We need new crankshaft, new rod bearings, new main bearings. The block is okay. We'll put all that back together again. I just got a quote from my parts guy and Chrysler wants $1,700 just for the crankshaft and that is my cost, which is far better than the standard person. So <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. I think we're gonna have to try to find an aftermarket solution or just try to find a used one possibly on eBay, something of that nature. Anyway, probably not going to go that route, but it's going to be a little bit before we can get some parts in and uh, we'll continue on with the build then. That's gonna be it though for this video. Uh, I hope you guys really liked it so far. It'll be a little bit more exciting once we actually start reassembling it. I'll have some tricks for you guys about putting that back together again. But I hope you guys like what you've seen. If you can, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you feel like it. I have a lot of other automotive content out there. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at reignitedtx. So thank you again guys so much for everything and we'll see you next time on Reignited.